who would you want to replace you? Of course, they were not talking about death. But in the event that, that he were to step down, he said, obviously, his answer to Chris was, obviously, I don't want someone in there who's going to undo everything I've done. And I don't think I need to tell you that, do, you, do I? I mean, he was so blunt about it. But we know what, what, what Justice Scalia would have wanted. You know, I, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of school when I tell you it was one of his greatest fears is that all of the work he did could be undone uh, by a successor. And I'm sure that, that these are thoughts going through the people in the White House as we speak when they try and, and, uh, and pick a replacement. Yeah, but this is, this is setting itself up to be a big fight. And, you know, you wonder if at the end of the day the GOP will look like, well, look, they're, you know, they're the group of no by not even, you know, looking at, at a nominee who the president may put forth. So there is a balance to walk on the part yes. of the, on the campaigns yes, as yes, well as the GOP, right? Yes, there is. Look, yeah. if Mitch McConnell does not let this come to the Senate floor, then whoever the Republican nominee for president is, is going to have to defend McConnell's position. And, right. that, and that may be a defense that that candidate does not want to make. So there, there's really so many ver, uh, uh, variations here. Uh, as to how this can play out, it's almost impossible uh, to predict. So, but those of us who knew him and loved him are sad and, and crushed by this, as you can imagine. Of, of course, of course. What a special, uh, what a special man he was. Let me ask you about how this takes place, because you've already heard from Hillary and you've heard from Bernie, who basically said, look, the president has a responsibility. He's going to do that. And then you've heard from the GOP candidates. Um, so this has become an election issue and a campaign issue. It, how does this change the election, do you think, Judge? Well, um, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz have been arguing, uh, and I think quite effectively, that this is uh, four days ago, we are one vote away from losing uh, the right to keep and bear arms. Uh, we're one vote away from abortion uh, on demand. Th those are now legitimate, valid, mainstream arguments to, to make, as, as is the opposite of those arguments for those who want the right to keep and bear arms to go away and who want uh, abortion on demand uh, to be lawful. I mean, obviously, we live in an age in which foreign uh, forces want to harm us, and the yeah. war on terror is a main issue. We have serious, serious economic issues, and you can speak to that far better uh, than I. But we now have this new issue. It's not just a fanciful, we are one vote away. It is, we are literally uh, one vote away. And yeah. here's the type of person that I would appoint. Here's the human being that I would appoint. You could very well see some, some non-political candidate some named potential nominee being a major, uh, being vetted and being a major issue in this campaign if the Republicans want to go that far. Because the Republicans will have to demonstrate that they are not just obstructionists, that they are trying to save the Constitution right. from a president who has very little fidelity to it. Right. Real quick, Judge, uh, can you go through uh, real quick uh, some of the cases that are uh, in front of the Supreme Court right now? Because that's going to be the argument on the left to basically say, look, we need business to keep moving forward. There are some important cases right now in front of the Supreme Court. Well, yes, there, there's a major affirmative action case right. before, the, uh, before the Supreme Court. There's the uh, immigration issue before the Supreme Court where a lower court has stayed the president's um, uh, the president's uh, executive order. There's a major abortion case before the Supreme Court where the lower court has upheld a rather restrictive uh, abortion law uh, in Texas. Uh, there's a major EPA case before the court where the Supreme Court just four days ago right. did the, the unthinkable, which is reach down into a lower court and order it to stay an opinion of the EPA. That was four to, uh, to five, so obviously that would have been a tie had Justice Scalia not participated, and that would, have, uh, would not have had the effect of the stay. Yeah. Look, if people are worried about, about uh, motions made to the court to change recent decisions because Antonin Scalia is not on the court any longer, that is not going to happen. The court will not undermine its own credibility by changing something that it did last week. But yeah. as for those cases that the court has heard oral argument on, and has not yet ruled on. There are only eight human beings that can weigh in on that. Yep. Really good. Uh, as always, great insights, uh, Judge. Thanks so much. We will all, see you soon, sir. All the best, Maria. Uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano there.